this is part four of unit two of photosynthesis. Uh, we'll wrap up photosynthesis with a few uh, things that should be largely review with a couple others that will maybe new to you. One thing just to hit on that we've already talked about is the carbon cycle, just to make sure we understand that all organic carbon in biological systems originates from CO2. And this just shows you that CO2 can come from multiple places, that CO2 gets into an ecosystem through the process of photosynthesis and organisms eating plants, eating plant, eating things that eat plants, and through decomposition enters back into an ecosystem as well through uh, organisms eating or decomposing and those uh, nutrients going back into the ground and so forth. And so you can kind of see that here. A couple of things like burning fossil fuels come into play, cellular respiration, obviously CO2 going back into the atmosphere through that. So this is just, just an important way to look at how carbon cycles through ecosystems. As far as energy cycling through ecosystems, this is something that should be familiar to you. Uh, the idea of uh, trophic levels, trophic is just a word that means feeding. And so these are just feeding levels. You have the sun in which that feeds all energy into the system. Then you have the primary producers, which are like your plants that are literally producing the food. And then a series of consumers. And what happens to that energy as you go up the ladder? Well, there's a lot less of it because those consumers are not only using that energy themselves to grow, to reproduce, to just for general metabolism, but they're also losing some of that energy as heat. And so at the next level, secondary level, for instance, of consumers, you have less energy available. There's a, and they've, after all these calculations, they've calculated that only around 10% of the energy available at the previous level is available for the next level. So this is a picture that you've probably seen something like this before, if this sunflower is able to capture 10,000 joules of sunlight for its own benefit, it will use 9,000 of that for its own growth, reproduction, and so forth, and 1,000 of those joules will only be available to the next level, the grasshopper here that's eating the plant. And so you would expect then that there would be less grasshoppers than there are flowers because there's just not as much energy available. At the next level, same thing, only a hundred of that original thousand are available to the mouse that eats the grasshopper leg here. And there's a lot less mice than there are grasshoppers. And snakes, there's a lot less snakes than there are rats because the, there's just not enough energy to sustain. And so you can see there just aren't, eventually you're going to get to an end where nothing is eating the next thing they, they call those apex predators are at the top of their food chain because nothing can afford to prey on them energy wise. And so this follows closely with our idea of thermodynamics, energy transfers, our energy is not created or destroyed. And these energy transfers, there's a loss of efficiency. There's a loss of heat uh, energy going through that. This next picture kind of shows you some of this idea of the 10% rule. And this shows you how they can lose those jewels. Uh, waste is another big one. Feces is, is just a common term for waste. It's like growth, adding new biomass to the actual caterpillar or cellular respiration, meaning just general keeping them alive. And so not much of that energy is going to be available of this plant that it's eating. It shows just a picture of a food web. And uh, I think it's important to see here that you know you, you take people at the top and we're at the top of this particular food web which i think is a, is a good one because we are at the, generally at the top of any food web and then you take a civilization that is dependent upon nature directly whereas we aren't we're dependent upon kroger really but the you, know, you take like the uh the native people that live in colder parts of the world like the arctic parts like um Inuits and others that feed upon whales and other things, you can see from this picture, what would it be more advantageous for those folks to feed upon? 
whales or fish. There's a lot more energy available in fish per capita than whales or even smaller things. And so you usually see that now. Some of these civilizations do feed on whales and they've gotten good at it, but they're typically smaller because they can't support that. And so just a way to, to visualize that. Another concept that's important is the amount of productivity on Earth. This is pictures, it says based on chlorophyll density, uh, just the amount of chlorophyll in an area, and you, the red areas have the highest amount of chlorophyll, and this makes sense, right? Here's the equator. We know that these parts of the world are filled with rainforests and so forth. Interestingly, to see our own portion of the world, tons of forest. We know if you fly over this part of the world, you just see trees. Um, and then look, just west of us, there's nothing because it's the Great Plains. There's not as much. It's just grass. Look here, the Sahara Desert, Arabian Desert, nothing. And so lots of energy available here based on the amount of chlorophyll that's available. This picture shows that as CO2 levels are going up, the average global temperature is going up as well. This has to do with uh, the greenhouse effect and global warming, climate change. This is what I'm trying to get to here. And so this um, equation deals with NPP, stands for the net primary productivity. The word net, you need to think of this as like a economic kind of thing. If you work for a week and you get a paycheck from the boss and they hand you a check and you worked 10 hours at $10 an hour, you would expect 100 bucks, right? But no, you only have like $74. Why is that? Because the government has taken a portion of your check and called it their own. Well, that $100 that you were owed is your gross pay. And then R here is what is owed to whoever else, and your net is um, $74. Well, let's look at this in terms of primary productivity, which primary productivity is how much food is being made by plants. You could look at this as a global situation. Uh, only about 1% of the sun's energy is captured by plants, but in that, 170 billion tons of sugar are made a year by the plants on Earth. That is the global primary production, the gross primary production. Or you could just look at a sing single ecosystem. Well, after everything is taken out of that, let's just put 100% here, representing any kind of number. After all the use is taken out of that, what is he being used for? Well, homeostasis, reproduction, uh, waste, heat, all these things that are being lost, we've said already, this is going to be around 90%. And so what's left, theoretically, should be around 10%. Now, you may see this number fluctuate. And you, if you see a problem concerning this, again, there's going to be a there's going to be several ways that a problem could present itself with these, but you're going to see that net be around ten percent.